in view of the laxity with which the prosecution has presented its case against the accused, I regret I have no alternative other than to dismiss the case and discharge the defendant, Edward Clayton. Court adjourned. What was the matter, Dan? What went wrong? I'm sorry, Sam. I can't tell you here. But you're the best prosecutor on the DA's staff. I thought you'd get a conviction easy. Didn't I get enough evidence? Well, you did a swell job, Sam. It's not your fault. Hey, Dan. Thanks for the break. But if you could only give me some explanation, Dan. It was an open and shut case. I know that. And you knew it was the first good chance we've had at any of those fake accident racketeers. Why, well, I could understand it if you were a new man prosecuting your first case. You must have had some reason. Tell me what it was. I can't. Not now. And under the circumstances, there's only one thing for me to do. Resign. Oh, you know I don't want that, Dan. Why don't you think it over? I have. Goodbye. And, uh, thanks. Well, I don't understand it, Sylvie. Why, the district attorney promised full cooperation. We've had to contend with public indifference and jury Dan Adams sold out. Well, what else is there to believe? I don't know. It's fairly part, of course, that he didn't consider the case serious enough. Merely taking the average man's attitude that I don't care if an insurance company gets stuck. They have plenty of money. Oh, a layman might believe that, but not a man from the district attorney's office. Why, I went over our reports with Harrison myself. I showed him how nearly every company had to double their public liability rates. How the motoring public alone has to pay 15 millions of dollars a year added premiums just because of these fake accident racketeers. And he passed that information on to Adams. Well, he told me he did. Every bit of it. Well, I'm through the case. That's the only word for it. Well, it's taught us one thing. We'll have to depend more on our own legal department after this. Yes, provided we'd get another chance as good as this one. Yes? Uh, Mr. Daniel Adams to see you. Adams? What do you suppose he wants? Well, it should be interesting to find out. Show him in. You want me to stay? No, I'll see you later. Mr. Adams? Yes. Well, I hardly expected a visit from you after what happened in court yesterday. I came here to explain that, Mr. Curtis. That's very thoughtful of you. But I think your actions explain themselves. I deliberately threw the case against Edward Clayton because he's really Edward Adams, my brother. What? what? I'm not trying to justify my actions. I've already resigned from the district attorney's office. But I intend to make up for what I did by trying to smash the whole fake accident ring. And with your cooperation, I believe I can. With my cooperation? Yes. I want a position on your legal staff. And I want the assignment of running those men down. Uh, sit down, Mr. Adams. Thank you. And imagine the nerve of the man coming here after the Clayton case. What do you suppose Mr. Curtis is saying to it? Plenty, if I know Mr. Curtis. I'd like to meet that Mr. Adams and give him a piece of my mind. He isn't worth the bother, Miss Carter. Just another crook. How can a man think so low? Ah, uh, some men have no pride in their professions. I have more respect for the racketeers than I have for a sneak like that. And I, Miss Carter. Me too. I'd like to walk up to that fellow and say, Adams? Uh -oh. Mr. Silsby, Mr. Adams is to join our legal staff. 
Mr. Adams, why are you? Mr. Adams is to work as special investigator and take his instructions from me. How do you do, Mrs. Silby? How do you do? Mr. Adams, uh, Mr. Johnson. How do you do, Mr. Johnson? How do you do? I'm sure. Uh, Miss Carter. Mr. Adams. How do you do? How do you do? Miss Carter is in charge of our claims adjustment department. I see. Now, you'll find that she can be very helpful to you. You'll cooperate with Mr. Adams in every way you can, Miss Carter? Yes, sir. Uh, you may use this desk and call on me for anything else you may need. Thank you, Miss Curtis. Miss Carter. Mr. Curtis told me you have some theories about the fake accident racket. Did he? I should be interested in hearing them. I doubt if you'd find them very interesting, Mr. Adams. Oh, but of course I have. Miss Carter. Yes, Mr. Adams? Mr. Curtis told me you have a file of questionable cases. I'd like to see it, please. Certainly. Here they are, alphabetically listed by name of claimant. Cross-indexed under name of attending physician, lawyer, handling case, type and nature of injury. Summary of the claim, the disposition and judgment. This gives you the main file number for reference to complete case history. The individual vouchers are filed over there. Is there anything else, Mr. Adams? Uh, no, not at present. Thank you very much. Oh, it's you. What do you want? You and I are going to have a little talk. Maybe I don't feel like talking to you. Go on, beat it. I haven't got anything to say to you. Would you rather talk to the police? All right. There, madame, is the effect I hope to achieve. Delft blue in sweeping, lovely lines. For contrast... Russet, to carry and mirror the warmth of your personality. And for highlight... Majolica. How perfectly exquisite. I know I'll simply adore it. Mm, one cannot but be inspired creating for your background, madame. If we can make an appointment for tomorrow, Mrs. Russell, I shall be more thoroughly prepared to discuss the plans I have for your guest chambers. Eddie, why didn't you call me last night? I had some things to attend to. Besides, I can't kiss you over a phone. Got a light? <laughs> Don't smoke those things. They're terrible. Well, what are they here for? To impress the customers. Here. Duke told me how lucky you were in court. Yeah, that was a sweet break. You will quit now, won't you, Eddie? Oh, Tonya. But you promised me. I know, but I've got to have a bank roll before we can get hitched. We have enough now. Enough to go someplace else and open up a shop like this. An antique shop? Me? But there's loads of money in it. And I know the business now. The only real way to get the out of antiques is to sell them phony oil stock. Eddie, I'm serious. I love you so much. And I'm so afraid that someday... All right, honey. I'll pull out of this racket. When? I'll talk it over to Duke now. Talk what over? A little business. All right, kid. I'll see you in a minute. Tonya, you better straighten up the salon. Handle any customers that come in. Very well.
Hi, boss. Is everything set? Yeah. How do you like to get up? I got the cab out back. Fine. Why didn't you park it in front? Give the police a little more help. Oh. You have any trouble getting the job? Not a bit. See? Chauffeur's license, company card, and everything. Okay, okay. Get that cab on the streets and keep out of trouble. What did you find out? Boss, I spotted a new excavation this morning. And I was thinking maybe Pop could do a nip up in Whitsaw. Now, don't waste your time trying to think. Just do what you're paid for. Where's Daisy? Last time I seen her, she was sitting in a wheelchair sobering up. I think she's out. All right, skip it. All right, let's deal a new one. Well, what's on your mind, kid? Got a new angle? A brand new one, Duke. I want to check out. Out of the gang? Why? Well, that, that trial came kind of close. I'm getting hot in this town. Anyway, I promised a couple of people I would. Who'd you promise? Tonya, for one. Tonya? Who else? My brother, Dan. Your brother? Well, he came to see me last night, got me out of bed. Gave me one of those big brother stories. He promised me a trip up the river if I didn't go straight. How much did you tell him? I didn't tell him anything. I wouldn't squeal on the gang, you know that. I just promised him to go straight. I had to. Scared of the DA's office, eh? He's not there anymore. He resigned yesterday. Mm -hmm. Now he's lined up with some insurance company. He swears he's going to bust this racket wide open. And you let that worry you. Well, now that I've been to court... You weren't convicted, were you? Well, we're taking lots of chances, Duke. Using the same flop artist over and over. That's out from now on. I've made arrangements to swap the ones we've been using for some new spool bugs from St. Louis. Yeah? Yeah, I telephoned long distance to Scarletti last night. He runs the racket there. And I'm working out the same kind of a deal with the boys from Los Angeles and New Orleans. Say, you figure all the angles, don't you? Uh, that's only the beginning. Eddie, I got some big things lined up for you. Have you? You bet I have. No more mugging around, running risks of being picked up. From now on, you're working with me. You're going to be my assistant. Well, that kind of puts a new slant on it, Duke. I knew you were a smart kid. Now listen, I want you to line me up some real accident victims. Real ones? You mean people have been hurt on the level? Yeah, and the more serious, the better. What if Dan finds out I'm still in on the racket? Say, will you forget about that brother of yours? I'll see that he leaves you alone. Now look, see if you can find me a woman who... I haven't had time to do a great deal of investigating, but I am convinced, at least to my own satisfaction, that half of these claims are fraudulent. Have you any plan of action? Yes, I have. In going over these suspicious cases, I found that most of them were handled by Russick, Collins, and Allen. Furthermore, Russick personally represented all the claimants. Isn't that more or less natural? They specialize in insurance cases. Yes, I know. But from some of the reports on these cases... Any particular one? Yes. I've been looking into the Walters claim. Oh, that case is legitimate. Russick's coming up here in a day or two to uh, make a little adjustment. Curtis, will you do me a favor? I certainly. Don't give him a check until I say so. Oh, very well, I won't, but, uh, you know, I... Meanwhile, I think I'll call on Mr. Russick. I see. Yes? Miss Carter would like to see you, Mr. Curtis. Oh, have her come in. Well, this is a bigger proposition than appears on the surface. Adams, we are up against both brains and organization. Oh, come right here, Miss Carter. Mr. Adams, just leave. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Here are those reports you asked for, Mr. Curtis. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, how are you and Adams getting along, Carol? Very well, I suppose, I'm making... Only what? Nothing. Nothing at all. Was there anything else you wanted? Yes, I want to hear what you were going to say. Why did you hire Adams when you knew how he threw the Clayton case? Oh, so that's it, eh? Oh, I know it's none of my business, but... Sit down, young lady. In justice to Adams, you ought to know the whole story. Russick, Collins, and Allen. I'm sorry, Mr. Russick can't be disturbed. Russick, Collins, and Allen. Just a moment. Judge Andrews of the Bar Association calling Mr. Russick. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, I'm awfully sorry, sir, but uh, Mr. Rustic isn't in right now. If you could call back, say, in a half hour or so. Thank you. Rustic, Allen and Allen. Oh, yes, Mr. Trotty. Uh, Mr. Trotty calling. Go right ahead, Mr. Trotty. Evidently, this Mr. Trotty is a very important personage, isn't he? 
Yes, uh, Mr. Trotty is a very important interior decorator and one of our very best clients. Obviously. Uh, did you say you wanted to consult Mr. Rustic about a case of some kind? Not exactly a case. I just want... I'll, uh, I'll be at Trotty's if anything urgent arises, Miss Brooks. Yes, Mr. Rustic. Oh, hello, Adams. How are you, Mr. Rustic? You want to see me? Yes. Yes, I want to talk to you about the Walters thing. Oh, that's right. You're with Consolidated now, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I hope you make good. Thank you. Now, about the claim. I'm Brooks, sorry, old man, but I'm in a bit of a rush. I'll be dropping in at Consolidated in a day or so, and I'll see you then, eh? Well, best of luck, old man. Best of luck. Goodbye. Uh, did you say you wanted to uh, consult Mr. Rustic about a case? No, I didn't. But just a moment. I have to fill out this appointment card. Well, I'm sorry there's been such delay on this Walters case, Mr. Rustic, but frankly, we've had some question about it. Do you want to take it into court? No, I don't think that'll be necessary. Or very smart on your part. If I put that poor young woman on the witness stand, it would cost you five times more than I'm asking now. Well, you're asking plenty as it is. A mere pittance compared to her suffering. A beautiful young bride, confined to a wheelchair since the accident. And even the doctors don't know how long it'll be before she'll recover. Mm. Yes, sir. Tell Adams that Mr. Russick's in my office. The Walters claim. Yes, sir. Adams? <laughs> what has he to do with this? Oh, merely a matter of routine. Uh, he's an attorney for the company. More red tape, eh? Well, I'm due in court in an hour. I hope this doesn't take too long. It won't. Hello, Mr. Russick. Well, <laughs> what's all that for? That's a motion picture projector. 16 millimeter, you know, and this is a screen. Obviously. Amateur photography is one of my hobbies. I just thought you might be interested. If this is your idea of a joke, Mr. Curtis, I'm afraid I don't see the point. You will. I haven't any time to waste on nonsense. I'm a busy man. Do you want to close the Walters claim now, or shall I take it into court? No, we'll close it right now, Mr. Russick. As I recall the claim you filed, Mrs. Walters' car was struck by one of our assureds. She suffered with a dislocated hip, a fractured shoulder, internal injuries, and... and severe suffering, both mental and physical. Why, the poor woman is still in agony and has been ever since the accident. Of course, of course. And we don't object to paying legitimate claims. But with so many fraudulent suits as there have been recently... Mr. We Curtis, it... is this man speaking as a representative for your company? He is. Then permit me to tell you that he's making your firm liable for a slander suit. My practice has always been reputable. My name, one of the most respected in the city. Mm, but you could be imposed upon, couldn't you? A man with my experience? Ridiculous. Oh, I've had enough of this idiocy. I came here to close the Walters claim. I want you to be patient and sit down. We're going to close it right now. In just a moment. Here we go. That's your client, Mrs. Walters, I believe. It is. Why, well, you can see for yourself how pitiful her condition is. Yes. Yes, indeed. Have you ever heard of a telephoto lens, Mr. Ruzzick? I believe that I have. Wonderful invention. It enables you to take a picture at a distance without your subject realizing it. That's how I got this next shot. That's still your client, isn't it? Why, why, yes. Rather rapid recovery, isn't it? You see the headline in that newspaper? That was published yesterday. We could prove in court when the picture was taken. Oh, there's Sam Belden. You know him, the detective. That's a picture from the rogues gallery he's holding. It's of a professional flop artist that the police know as Dislocation Daisy. But then we know her as Mrs. Walters, don't we? All right. The show's over. I 
I hope you enjoyed it, Mr. Russick. I, I, I don't know what to say. I never was so startled in all my life. To think that I was fooled by that innocent looking woman. I never dreamed that. Why, if I had thought for one moment that. We realize that. I, we wouldn't dream of accusing you, Mr. Russick. Certainly not. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. <laughs> nice work, Adams. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. That sounds excellent, Duke. Excellent. Provided that you find the right victim, uh, subjects. Eddie's lining one up now. A young widow with a kid. She fell off a stepladder the day before yesterday and busted her leg. Splendid. Will she make a good witness? She hasn't a dime. She'd lie herself black in the face to save her kid from going hungry. We promised her 500 bucks if we win the claim. A joint suit against the taxi company and car line. It's a natural, Duke. Are you sure there aren't any slip-ups? You know what Adams did to the Walter frame-up. I don't forget things like that. Time Mr. Adams was spoken to gently. You think you two boys can handle it? It'll be a pleasure, boss. Get these things out of your way. Don't move them. Well, if you're going to do any work. I thought perhaps I could help you. May I? Oh, well, I guess I can muddle through. I have the hang of these files now. But I want to help. Really? I want to make up for the way I've treated you. But you haven't. It... I've been absolutely hateful because I didn't know the whole truth. Please forgive me. Of course, only there's nothing to forgive. Friend? Friend. Where do we begin? Uh, let's recheck these descriptions. All right. You're right, Carol. The description of the woman is identical in every case. And insured by a different company each time. Oh, it's too bad we haven't a picture of her. Sam would know her. Who's Sam? Sam Belden, the best detective on the force. I wonder if he could identify her from that description. He might. I'll call him. You know, I bet we could find other duplicate cases in these files. Sure. I wouldn't be surprised. He's still working in the office. I'm not James with him. Don't he ever know when to quit? Maybe you better park the car around the corner, Chick. Yeah. It's a good idea. <laughs> Okay, Sam, in front of the building in five minutes. And thanks a lot. Yeah. Have you ever been at the Rose Gallery? No. Well, get your hat and come along. I'll show you some prize beauties. <laughs> Got a match, bud? Yeah, sure. Does it hurt much? Oh, no, no, not at all. Okay, Jimmy. Well, have a check for fingerprints. Right. Well, they found the car. Abandoned. Stolen, I suppose. Sure, sure. Belongs to a respectable businessman. He reported the swipe about ten minutes ago. And there goes that lead. Sure. <laughs> you could hardly pin a slugging job on an interior decorator. Interior decorator? Yeah. The car was hooked from a guy named Trotty. Trotty? 
Yeah, L. Tratty. Hmm. Of all the idiots, you two are the worst. A pair of old women could have done better. Well, uh, how do we know if that flatfoot would come busting in on us? An intelligent person is prepared for every possible eventuality. But look, boss. And letting them spot the license number. They fell for their stolen car gag, didn't they? I hope so. Let's forget everything. I will, if you don't pull any boners today. Come on. Well, how much longer, Chick? Practically two, boss. How do you feel, Mrs. Turner? I'm all right. Why, of course you are. You'll take good care of my Johnny, won't you? Why, certainly we will. He and my secretary are getting along splendidly. So the little boy took the golden apples home back to his mama and made her very, very happy. Wasn't that nice? Yes. Yeah. Where's my mommy? Your mommy has gone for a long ride in a big automobile. And then she's coming back to you. In the automobile? That's right. And do you know what you and I are going to do? No. We're going out to buy some ice cream cones. There we are, boss. Fine. I'll help around with the stocking, Chick. Okay. Now, you understand just what you're to say after the accident. I asked the driver to slow down. I tried to brace myself, but I didn't have time. Perfect. When do I get the money? As soon as we win the court judgment. Well, I guess we're about ready. All ready. All right, boys. Now, take it easy, boys. Now, don't worry. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'm not afraid. That's right. Make it a good crash. I got you. We'll make a cool ten grand out of this. Have you got the witnesses planted? They'll be there. Brace yourself. Here we go. Hello. Yes? Yes, Moxie. What? You blundering fool! What's wrong? She's dead. A very unfortunate twist of fate. Very unfortunate. You should have insured her life. Well, it's too late to talk about that now. But we've still got the kid. Isn't there something we can do with him? Of course. First one of us will have to be appointed as the child's guardian. Can you arrange that? For enough money, yes. Go ahead. Then the child's guardian brings suit against the taxi company and car line. Will they pay off in a case like that? If we don't collect a hundred thousand for that poor little orphan, I'm not half the attorney I think I am. A hundred thousand dollars? And if anything should happen to the boy? Nothing must happen to him until after he wins the judgment. No, of course not. Stop. So many suspicions and so little proof. They're bound to make a slip somewhere, sometime. And that's just the trouble. Probably made dozens of slips. Slips we're too blind to see. Oh, it's all such a terrible muddle. How about the Armstrong case? Anything suspicious there? Plenty. Same lawyer, same doctors. What can we prove? Where's the file? My desk. Hello, 
there. And how's the Royal Order of Night Owl? Hello, Sam. Good evening. Oh, hello, Miss Carroll. Could I stay in a few minutes of your time, Danny? Oh, of course. Huh? What's the good news? Well, now, I don't know whether it's good news or bad. I've run across a funny one. Accident case. Maybe. This concern here writes the insurance for the streetcar company, doesn't it? Yes, it does. How about the Peerless Taxi Company? We write their coverage, too. Good. Have you had a claim filed against the other room for, uh, Mrs. No, wait a minute. Wait, don't rush me here now. Wait. <gasps> Mrs. Edith Turner. I can find out. If you please. Now, what's it all about, Sam? Well, I had it handed to me to investigate, and it looked like an ordinary accident case. You know, a taxi driver trying to argue the right away with a streetcar. So I started a routine checkup. And all at once I began to smell a whole basement full of rats. Were any of them the rats I'm after? Well, no, I don't know. The woman who was killed was a poor widdy with a young child. She had been laid up in bed with a broken leg. She broke it a week ago. A week ago? She was riding in a cab? That's right, with no sign of a plaster cast or a bandage. Well, that doesn't make sense. You're right, it don't. And to make it funnier yet, the boy has disappeared and no trace of him has been reported. And the taxi driver was Moxie Malley. I never heard of him. Huh? Well, the police have plenty. You know, he'd been driving for the cab company about three days when the accident happened. Said he'd reformed. You know, he claimed he was trying to make an honest living. Couldn't the woman have been on her way to a doctor? With no plaster cast and her leg broke like a chiny plate over a week ago? And she paying taxi fare when she only had five dollars to her name and a child to feed? Huh. Well, what do you make of it, Sam? You might make most anything. If the woman was insured for a large sum of money payable to, say, uh, Rusik? Trotty. Uh-huh. I've looked through the new claims files and there's no report. Oh, well, it may show up in a day or two. Would you let me know? The moment it comes in. Okay, so much for that. Now tell me, how are things breaking for you two? No, not so good. I may have something before tomorrow. Just what do you mean by that? I'll tell you more later. Sam, will you take Miss Carroll home? I've got to make a visit. I'd be willing to pay for the privilege. <laughs> Trouble? Well, no, of course not. What do you want? What does the and misses mean? Just what it says. I told you I was going straight. Well, I am. I married a swell girl. It's a straight and narrow for both of us from now on. Well, I'm glad to hear it, kid. Listen, Eddie, I want you to give me a little help. Hello, Eddie. Wait inside, will you? Yeah, of course. What's on your mind? Who was that? My brother. Oh. I'm not talking to him or anyone else. No, of course not. You're not that kind. Where have you been the last couple of days? Oh, around. Yeah, the boys thought maybe you ran out on them. I told you I was quitting, and I have. Only a sap quits when the going's good. All right, then I'm a sap. But I'm quitting, I'm staying quit. That Turner business is one too many. Okay, kid. Good luck. Thanks, Duke. Oh, by the way, stop into the office tomorrow, will you? What for? Wedding present, you chump. The boys have chipped in. Say, that's swell of them, and you too. Skip it. Be seeing you. So long. What kind of help do you want from me? I thought you'd left the gang. I have, on the level. Good. Listen, Eddie, I want to smash this fake accident racket with or without your help. But if you will help me... Nothing doing. Not me. Afraid? Yeah. Not so much what they'll do to me, to Tonya. Oh, I see. She's a great girl, Dan. She knows about me. All of us. But... Oh, Eddie, are you all right? Of course I am. I'm sorry. I thought you were alone. Dan, this is Tonya, my wife. This is my brother, Dan. How do you do? I'm very glad to know you. I've just been down the corner to get some things for a midnight snack. On the way back, I saw... Yes, he was here. Everything's all right. Oh, uh, 
May I fix a place for you? Oh, thank you. I was just going. Please. Sure, stick around. It won't take but a minute. Well, all right. If I'm not being too nosy, have you lined up a job, Eddie? Because if you haven't, I might be able to... Well, we're going into business. You are? Yes, we're negotiating with a man downstate. He has an interior decorating shop for sale. Tanya knows that business inside out. And as soon as we can convince the man to cut his price another 500, the place will be ours. If he cuts the price. Well, I have a couple of thousand in the bank. You're welcome to any part of that. Oh, we couldn't do that. We weren't trying to put the bee on you. Oh, no, I want to help. Well, look, Dan. Will you make it a regular business loan? Let us pay you interest? Well, if you insist. You're a swell fellow. No fool. Oh, forget it. I want to see you two make a bang-up success of marriage. You hear that? Coming from the most confirmed bachelor in town. No, uh, no more. What? I'm uh, changing my views. Who's the girl? When do you take the jump? Well, she doesn't know anything about it yet. I haven't worked up enough courage to propose. Uh, don't wait too long. <laughs> I won't. Do I know her? I don't think so. What's her name? Carol Carter. She works for the same firm I do. Well, that calls for another cup of coffee, whether you got room for it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and for her sake, as well as his own, he's afraid to talk. I can't say that I blame you. Me neither. Looks like our only lead now is that missing Turner child. Yes, and until we locate him, there's nothing we can do. Except wait till someone files legal guardianship. Oh, I wish the old days were back again, the days when I was pounded me first beat. What would you do? I'd drag that shyster Russick into the basement of the station house and I'd shake him loose from his rattles. Sam, you remember what I told you about Eddie being nervous last night about the chap who came to see him and how Tonya acted when she found out he'd been there? Uh-huh. Well, there may not be any connection, but see if this description means anything to you. He's about 30, 35, medium height, slim, about 145, dark complexion, smooth shaven, good dresser, distinct Latin type. Sure. I know a lot of dudes that would fit that. Say, that's not a bad description of Trotty. Trotty? Duke Trotty again. We were right, Dad. Every single lead we get goes straight back to that man. Well, that settles it. I'm going to get into that shop and have a look around. Huh. You might just as well walk right into the morgue and stretch out on a slab. Sam's right. They've got you spotted. Now you let me take care of it. Every crook in town knows you, Sam. You wouldn't have a chance of learning anything. Well, I guess that puts it up to me. Oh, don't be silly. <laughs> what do you mean? I know a little about interior decorating. And with a bit of brushing up, I could talk it as glibly as anyone. Now, if I can just persuade Mr. Trotty that I'm an ambitious young girl looking for work. What a lovely material. Yes, isn't it? A bit apart from the conventional trend. Looks a bit expensive for my client. It's twelve fifty a yard. I'll give you the customary reduction. I do hope I can persuade her to buy it. You may tell her that I recommend it if you wish. Oh, thank you. Not at all. You've no idea how difficult it is for a freelance decorator like myself to persuade a client to really spend money. Well, I sometimes have the same trouble. <laughs> oh, but you're established. I'm not. You have very excellent taste, Miss Palmer. Thank you. And a great many friends who are all very lovely and flattering. But when they have their homes redone, they always commission some well-known firm. I don't know how many chances I've lost that way. Oh, but how very unfortunate. If I only had the prestige of some well-established firm to back me up, I'm sure I could get ever so much business. Could I make some sort of an arrangement with you? Well, uh, in, in what way? Let me be a representative of Trotty Limited. We could divide the commissions on any work I might bring in. Well, it, it has certain possibilities. I'm sure we'd make a great deal of money. We'll talk about it, shall we? Do you think your client would be interested in some bronzes? Well, they would fit in in my plans. Italian Renaissance, isn't it? Yes, by Francesco de Corelli. What a lovely patine. Yes. And this for a foil. German Gothic. Perfect. I have some more in my stockroom, if you'll excuse me just for a moment. Just make yourself at home. Thank you. Chick, come here. Take a look at that girl. Ever see her before? No, never. She's a phony of some kind. Yeah? Claims to be an interior decorator and doesn't know a real Corelli bronze from those cheap imitations. I told her that Baroque silver gilt was German Gothic and she never batted an eye. Oh, 
Oh, I wouldn't hold that against her. Well, I'm going to get rid of her. I want you to shadow her. See where she goes and what she does. Okay. I'm afraid the things I wanted to show you have been mislaid. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, I'm having one of my men look for them. Now, why don't you go and have lunch, come back afterwards, and we'll make arrangements about a business connection. All right, say in about an hour. Well, make it an hour and a half. Hello, old man. I was afraid you weren't coming. I told you I would. I'll be with you in a minute. I'll be running along now, Mr. Trotty. All right, Miss Palmer. I'll see you at half past one. At half past one, then. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, Eddie, how's the wife? Just fine. She's a wonderful girl. You're lucky. I know it. Sit down, Eddie. I want to talk to you. Well, I'd like to, but I promised Tonya. What? Taking orders already? Well, you know. I, ah, I was only kidding. They don't come any better than Tonya, Eddie. She deserves everything you can give her. You bet. But there's mighty little profit in going straight these days. Now, if you're stuck to me, you could buy her everything a woman wants. Nothing doing. I promised her. But you wouldn't be running any risks just hauling in money. Money to buy her car, clothes, jewelry. Sorry, Duke. I've made up my mind. So you won't listen to reason, eh? Not that kind. Okay, kid. Have it your way. I'll go and tell the boys you're here. Pretend you don't know anything about the wedding present. They want to surprise you. Okay. Well? She's there now. What'd he say? Same thing. I couldn't reason with him. Maybe he's not so crazy at that. What if Eddie does want to quit? He ain't the kind of a guy to turn stool pigeon. Uh, any quitter is that kind of a guy. And we can't afford to take any chances. I still don't think he would. What? Did I get an for? What happened? I tailed her about three blocks to a drugstore. She was plenty cagey, too. Finally, she went into a phone booth. I ducked into the next one. I could hear everything she said through the petition. Well, go on, go on. What did she say? She says, this is Carol Carter. Give me Dan Adams. Then she says, oh, Dan? Dan Adams. Get that. Dan. She says, he fell for it beautifully. I'll call you again this evening. Then she hung up. I guess we know now whether Eddie talked to Dan or not. I've heard enough. Let's get him out here. Wait a minute. Eddie ain't no squealer. Maybe Dan got his lead someplace else. And maybe he didn't. We ought to make sure. Okay, we'll prove it. Beat it around outside and come in the front door. Get an earful what was on in that office. Okay. Fix up the present. Oh, Eddie. Come on in. Say, the boys are nearly set, and are they getting a kick out of it? They're sure a swell bunch. Yeah. By the way, remember that girl that was leaving as you came in? I saw her, yeah. Know who she is? Never saw her before in my life. Well, maybe you're getting out just in time. She's a plant. She is? Mm-hmm. Came around here looking for a job. Said her name was Isabel Palmer, but it didn't take me long to spot her. Well, uh, who is she? Some snoop from the police or the insurance companies. Her name's Carol Carter. Well, uh, what are you going to do? What do you think? Stick around. I'll see if the boys are set. Consolidated insurance. I gotta speak to Dan Adams. Pray up, it's important. Yes, honey, everything's just fine. I'll be home in an hour. Hello, Chick. Hello, Eddie. Where have you been keeping yourself? I'm a married man now. So we heard. Congratulations. Thanks. Oh, well, Eddie. I'll be right there. Coming? You bet. How's the blushing bridegroom? Put it there. All right, Moxie, let it go. Little surprise for you, Eddie. I'll say. <laughs> How about you fellas coming up to the plant for a goodbye dinner? That'll be swell. You better ask Tanya first. Well, I guess we're all set. Eddie, on behalf of the other fellas and myself, allow me to present you with a little token of our friendship. Gee, fellas, Tonya had her eye on this for a long time. I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything, kid. You've got it coming to you. You've been a regular guy. 
I know a lot of fellows who wouldn't quit a gang without double-crossing them. And you're not that kind. You know I wouldn't squeal on a gang like this. But there are rats who would. It must be pretty hard for you, Eddie, especially when you've got a brother like Dan Adams. Uh, Dan knows I wouldn't squeal. Sure, but blood's thicker than water. And he'd expect you to call him, especially if you found out one of his co-workers was on the spot. What do you mean? What do you think I mean, Eddie? You sounded kind of serious. Of course, I might have known you were kidding. I wouldn't kid you, Eddie, and you wouldn't kid me, would you? Of course I wouldn't kid you. And you wouldn't try to phone your brother either if you knew Chick was listening, would you, Eddie? Chick. I think we could go for a little more of that music, don't you, Chick? Right. No, I just got back. Well, I've been thinking the matter over. And if you still care to be part of Trotty Limited... Oh, I do. All right. I'll pay you $50 a week and give you half the profit of any business you find. That's more than fair. Now, let me see. I'm going to be busy this afternoon. I need somebody to go out to the Colby home. Where's that? Oh, 30-odd miles from town. They're a fussy old couple, and I rearrange their furniture every three months. They want it done today. I see. Now, if you can take charge of it, I'll send one of the men along to do the heavy moving. All right. Fine, I'll get them. It's all set. Have Chicken Moxie gone? Just drove away. Good, come on. Palmer, this is Kelly. He'll show you where the home is. You have your own car? Yes, it's right outside. Mrs. Colby will be expecting you at three. Very well. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'll see what happens. Works well. Get back to the car. State patrol's due here any minute. Is he badly hurt? I'm afraid you killed him. Take a drink of this, it'll brace you up. No, I don't want it. Go ahead, you need it. <laughs> when did this happen? Who did it? The woman driving that car just a minute ago. Why, well, this man is dead. Did you two see this? Yeah, I saw the whole thing. She was driving all over the road like she was drunk. What's your name, young lady? Carol Carter. Drunk, eh? No. No, I'm not drunk. You don't understand. I understand drunk driving and manslaughter. Come along. No, no, really, officer. I'm not drunk. I haven't. Officer, really, no. It's just as I've told you, as I've told the police. The man stepped right back in the road in front of the car. I tried to stop, but I couldn't. Why not? I don't know. The brakes didn't hold. Carol, I hate to put you through all this, but you must help me. Remember, I'm your attorney. I know. What is it, Dan? Now, is there anything you've forgotten to tell me? No, I don't believe there is. All right, dear. But if you recall any incident, no matter how unimportant it may seem... I'll let you know. Have they identified the man? Oh, uh, Belden's working on that. I can still see him falling right in front of the car. Falling? 
But you said stepping backward before. Now, which was it? I... Why, well, falling, I believe. It all happened so quickly. Oh, hello, Dan. Hello, Sam. Hello, Miss Carter. Have you discovered anything, Mr. Belden? Well, not much, but we've got half a headquarters working on the case. Could I see you alone for a minute, Dan? Oh, yes, sure. Carol, there's no use denying that things look bad. But you must have faith in us. I have, Dan. Ever so much. Well? Well, first off, Russick has filed application for guardianship of the Turner kid. And Russick is Trotty's lawyer. All right, all right. But what about the man that Carol's car hit? Well, I haven't got the police lab's report yet. The buys are still working. Did you get the identification? Yep. Well? Well, it's bad news for you, Dan. For me? That poor boy was your brother. My brother? Come on, Sam. We're going to the police lab. According to these reports, there were a great many cuts and bruises on the body. That's right. That would necessarily mean quite a loss of blood, wouldn't it? Yeah, there must have been. And here's a photograph taken at the scene of the accident. You see any sign of blood stains in the road? Well, I know I didn't. Uh, if there'd been any stains, we'd see them in this print. Yeah. What happened to the piece of twine that was found near the body? Oh, I have it right here. Did you make a check on it? Yes, I did. I had a lot of trouble identifying it, too. Well, why? Looks like a regular piece of cord. Yes, but it isn't quite so ordinary. This is upholsterous twine and is used in the construction of furniture. Furniture? Yeah, now this may not mean anything, but my guess is that the victim worked in a furniture factory. Why do you say that? I made a microscopic examination of some scrapings in the clothes. There was a lot of lint there. Well, what kind of lint? Well, quite a mixture. Horsehair and fabric threads, and then there was a trace of glue and some wax and varnish and sawdust. Did you find any foreign materials like that in the cuts in his face? In the cuts? What do you mean? Will you make a check on it? Yes, I will. Sam, does Eddie's wife know yet? I don't believe so. I don't know why he went so far out of the city. I don't understand it. When did you see him last? At 11 o'clock this morning. He said he'd be back in an hour. Where did he say he was going? He didn't tell me. Where did he say he was going? I just told you. I don't know. He didn't tell me. Told you? Eddie wasn't killed in an automobile accident. He was murdered. Murdered? I'm almost certain of it. And if you can tell us where he went, I think I can get the proof. He did tell me. Where did he go? I'll take you there. I still have my key. Now give us the key. Tell us where he went. I'm going with you. I want to see for myself. Just what I thought. Where is the workroom? Back there.
Sam. Huh? Look here. Blood stains that I never saw any. I want a sample of this lint for the lab. Take a sample of this twine, too. Right. If this matches... It will, Dan. I know it will. Can you tell me now what happened? Yes, I think I know. Tell me. It isn't pleasant. Tell me. I knew Eddie wasn't killed in that accident. There was no blood on the road and Eddie was badly cut. It's only... dead bodies that don't bleed. Then this is where they... They? Yes. And then they took his body out there and framed the automobile accident. Yes, sir. Can you prove who killed him? Prove it in court? I don't know. I'm not sure. It's Trotty. Duke Trotty killed my husband. I can only get him here and trick him into a confession. I can do that for you. You? Yes. Oh, you wouldn't dare try that. It's too risky. Not if he thinks I'm alone doesn't know that you two are listening. It is a long chance. But a chance worth taking. Duke, this is Tonya. I'm at the shop. Never mind that. Where is Eddie? No, I haven't heard from him since the morning. You've done something to him. I know you have. Don't lie to me, Duke. I found bloodstains on the workroom floor. I'm going to phone the police. All right. I'll wait till you get here. But you've got to tell me where Eddie is. He's coming. All right, sir. Be careful. Here I am, Tonya. Where is Eddie? Eddie? I haven't seen Eddie since this morning. Don't lie to me, Duke. Where's my husband? I don't know. He left here about one o'clock. What have you done to him? Now, why should I do anything to Eddie? He's probably at your apartment now, wondering where you are. What happened in the workroom? In the workroom? Oh, you mean those stains on the floor? Oh, it's too bad they got you all upset, Tonya. That's nothing but dye. Dye? Yes, dye. Old man Hanson was dipping some drapes from Mrs. Russell's home and he spilled some on the floor. Who are you going to call? The police. Leave that phone alone. I've told you the truth. I selected the drapes for Mrs. Russell and sent them to her home last week. You killed my husband in the workroom and I'm going to have the police investigate. Now, wait a minute, Tonya. I'll tell you how it happened. It was a kind of an accident. Yes, accident. Eddie was seeing too much of his brother, so we started to work him over. That is, uh, Connie and Moxie and Chick. Well, the boys got a bit rough and... Oh, it's tough on you, Tonya. But you're in this business as deep as we are. And if the police should find out... Reach, Duke! Duke. I'll call headquarters. Looks like you sort of tossed yourself right into a nose, didn't you, Trotty? Police headquarters. Drop that gun, Flatfoot. Drop it. Hang up that phone. Duh. Nice work, Connie. Me and Moxie figured you took a long time. For once, you and Moxie figured right. It was a nice little trap, Adams. But you didn't expect me to bring my boys with me, did you? Get the car around back. Right. We're taking our company for a little fresh air. I regret that my facilities for entertaining unexpected company are somewhat limited. I hope you won't be too bored. It was really too bad about Eddie. But if you hadn't persuaded him to go straight, he might have been alive now. So you see, it was really his fault not... Don't open that purse. Why not? Give it to me. I only wanted my handkerchief. I'll get it. Now stand back. Don't touch that gun. Now you're going to pay. Pay for killing Eddie. Don't stop her. Stop her. She'll kill me. 
Just as you killed my husband. I didn't kill him. I swear I didn't. It was an accident. Accident? Tonya, oh. you can't do that. Come on, up with him. Put him up. You too. Tonya, call the police. Take him up. As pretty a piece of work as I've ever seen. And thanks to the information she gave us, we were able to give a lot of other cities some real help in cleaning up their fake accident ring. The insurance companies are certainly indebted to you, Harrison. You mean Dan? Oh, he's the best investigator I have. Had, you mean. Oh, Dan, here's something I've been saving for you. Your resignation. Oh, thank you. I wanted to see you tear it up yourself. No, 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 don't do it. Go ahead. I will, but not now. Why not now? You're not going to stick to a stodgy insurance company job. Well, you bet he is. At his own salary. I'm sorry, Mr. Curtis. I'll tear this up one month from today, when I get back from my honeymoon. Honeymoon? Oh, gentlemen. <laughs> Mrs. Adams. Come on, dear. Goodbye. 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 Well, that certainly leaves me in a fine spot. Not only do I lose my best attorney, but the most efficient girl I ever employed. You know, Curtis, that marriage is about the only fatal accident that wouldn't jip an insurance company. Ha, 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 ha.